Once upon a time, there were two friends that offended their friend. Every day after the offense, one of their friends asked for forgiveness and changed their ways. The other friend, however, did not ask for forgiveness and allowed the guilt to grow until they just couldn't take it any longer and one day killed themselves. Because of that, the friend that let the guilt take over is believed to have lost their life due to their evil ways. While the other friend who asked for forgiveness and changed their ways was able to do good and lead others to living a good life and became known as the first pope of the Roman Catholic Church. So this is a story of Jesus' disciples, Peter and Judas, and it helps to illustrate that the guilt of sin can cause a minor hindrance in one's life or can consume their life. Now we can learn many valuable lessons from this example, but first I'd like to take a look at some of the mental health conditions that can have guilt, and then also take a look at rare but concerning scenarios in which one should feel guilty but does not feel guilty, and then we'll return back to the spiritual example. Guilt can be a feeling that one has committed a wrong or a crime, or it could be a feeling that someone tries to impose on others to get them to do something like a guilt trip. Now, when guilt is a symptom of depression, it's typically a feeling that has been there for most of the time for at least two weeks, oftentimes longer, and it may be associated with other problems like affecting one's mood or they don't enjoy life, or maybe it affects their energy, their sleep, or their appetite. Now, when guilt is part of a depression, it can be treated in a variety of ways. Most optimally, it's treated with a combination of medications and psychotherapy. And the psychotherapy is often geared to this term called behavioral activation, where it sort of encourages one or the therapist encourages somebody to do activities that they enjoy and that are healthy for them, even if they're not feeling like it. Another approach that psychotherapy might try to address is cognitive therapy, because oftentimes there's uh, negative thoughts uh, that someone is having that's affecting their feelings and affecting their actions. And so it's by addressing those negative thoughts that that whole relationship of the feelings and actions can get better as well. So guilt can also be a symptom of trauma, and it's one of the symptoms that are often present in people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. People can have guilt from being abused sexually, physically, emotionally, but also it's people who have committed the abuse. They may have guilt because they are sorry for their wrongdoings or their acts that they committed. There's also this notion of survivor's guilt, which can be seen in people uh, that are in the military who have survived wars in which maybe their comrades or friends were, did not survive. Guilt in cases of trauma can also be treated with the combinations of medications and or therapy, but the therapy in this case is often focused on the traumatic experience itself, and it's encouraging the person to try to recreate or shape a healthy, positive narrative of the traumatic events that took place. Oftentimes, the healing will come from seeing what good has come out of that traumatic experience. Guilt is typically from one's conscience telling them that they are doing something wrong, but sometimes someone's conscience does not tell them that they are doing something wrong. This can be seen in people like sociopaths who they may do a wrong crime or they may do a crime or do a wrong deed and their conscience is not telling them that they're doing anything wrong. In fact, many times people who are sociopaths can get a thrill out of that wrong act. And that way, they're conscious almost like in reverse. On other occasions, the guilt may be deeper. So not in the conscious, but in the unconscious part. So when it's in the conscious part of the mind, it's easier to redirect, to, to change, to think of something else. But when it's unconscious, it's often deep down and rooted in someone's personality or habits or character. And so therapy can help address this, but sometimes it can take weeks, months, if not years, of therapy to get down to this unconscious part and to bring it up to one's conscious awareness. It's one's conscious awareness that's easier to change and improve this guilt. When guilt is deep-rooted, that can be a source of problems with self-esteem, questions about one's identity, or maybe questions about their self-worth. And I think ultimately when it gets this deep into one's core values and beliefs, then you really have to look into that spiritual approach to dress in. I think the best approach is the Holy Bible. The Bible teaches us that as humans, we are created to be in God's image. We are created to be holy, to love God, to have fellowship with God, and treat one another with love. 
And sometimes if we do sin or evil or don't believe in that, we tend to get away from what God wants us to be. We tend to get away from that holy creatures that God created us to live by. And we can see in the story of Peter and Judas that people are human. Humans make mistakes. Even some of Christ's closest disciples and supposedly holiest people make mistakes. But if we have to change the evil and change it for good in order for us to live a good and fruitful life. So I've already talked about some of the mental health conditions like depression or post-traumatic stress disorder that can cause guilt. And I talked about some of the medications and therapy approaches that can treat guilt in those settings. In cases of a spiritual shortcoming or like a sin that separates somebody from God, then we need to practice this theological method of repentance. And it comes from a Greek word called metania or metanoia, in which it literally involves changing the mind so that one does stops the evil and does good. It literally is a transformation process that oftentimes needs prayer and God's grace in order for one to reach that level. But when we do allow God into our life to help have that transformation process, then we're able to have the good characteristics of the Holy Spirit that St. Paul promises us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And the Orthodox faith, so not only do we have to pray to God to allow this sin or shortcomings to be removed from our life, but also in order to be fully freed and healed from it, we have to confess to a priest. So in summary, I've talked about some of the most common spiritual and mental health challenges that can cause guilt to come up and talked about both psychiatric and spiritual ways to help address it.